Hello everyone! Today we'll start working on Lion L. Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels Space Marine Chapter. First up will be his sword, which will be done with non-metallic metals. Start with getting a feel for the angle and how the light would play off the edges. And also any reflections. It's actually far enough away that it shouldn't reflect the model at all. Start with Hoath Blue and Dark Reaper. These will be the sky reflection colors. I know Hoath is a dry brush paint, but I'll add some Lamium Medium to make it more malleable. Going to start off by blocking where I want the colors. As you can see, the Hoath Blue doesn't have great coverage, but it will be fine to add color to a lighter surface later on. Next, I add some other tones with Xerus and Screaming Skull. The purple will be for a horizon color reflection, and the Screaming Skull will be for the sun. Once again, going to block out where I want the reflections. Since the tip is curved, that's where I will add the purple, because it has the most dramatic change in reflection. Also going to add Screaming Skull to the edges since they catch pretty much all the light sources, and this will give them a sharp feel. Going to start blending the colors now, adding some Lamium Medium to the Screaming Skull for a thinner coat to get a smoother transition. Now going back to the Hoath Blue to add some colors to the blade using lots of layers to build a smooth transition from the dark to blue areas. Adding some Lamium Medium to the Dark Reaper for a smooth transition here. Now going to add a little Screaming Skull to the Dark Reaper, just because it felt too dark, especially on the black primer. Here we have the rough reflections of the sword done. Adding some Fenrisian Grey to help with the transition between the Screaming Skull and the Hoath Blue. Going to add some Lamium Medium for smooth transitions. Also, add the grey to the edges that are further away from the main sun reflection. Going back to Dark Reaper, adjust the reflections. I want the lower side of the blade to be a bit darker than the upper side, but I make a blending mistake and have to correct it with Fenrisian Grey. Decided to add some lighter sky reflections here since the blade curves a bit, using the lighter Dark Reaper and Fenrisian Grey. Adding some more saturation back in with a glaze of Hoath Blue. Making sure the edges have a solid coat of Fenrisian Grey. Mixing Dark Reaper and Fenrisian Grey 50-50 to get a better blend on the one corner.
Next, mixing Xerus Purple and Fenrisian Grey 50-50 and adding it to the tip of the blade. Going back to Dark Reaper for the transition between the purple and blues. Since the blade is blocked out at this point, all the paint I'm using is thinned with Lamian Medium to get smooth transitions. Adding some Fenrisian Grey to the edges on the tip to represent the sharpened edge areas and to add some visual appeal. using just the grey to lighten areas that feel too dark. Now that I've lightened the areas, they've lost their saturation, so I'm going to add some colour back with a thin layer of Hoeth Blue. Back to Fenrisian Grey to refine the blending. Starting to work on the sun reflection using Screaming Skull to build it up with thin layers. Building up the sun reflection here. Note I'm applying some of the sun reflection to the lower side of the blade. This is for a bloom like effect. areas where the sun would also catch the blade. The very center of the sun reflection I'll add some white scar, also along the edge near the sun reflection, and a few other places that need to be very bright. Here I'm just checking to see how it looks on the model and to see what else needs to be done. Now I'm going to start adding more general light reflections to the blade using white scar thinned with Lamian Medium. I'm going to add a bit more white to the edges to help give them a sharp feeling since the edge would be at a different angle than the rest of the blade and would have a different reflection angle. Going back to Screaming Skull to refine the sun reflections a bit more. Blending the sun reflection into the sky reflection with more Fenrisian Grey. Now, back to Hoeth Blue to blend the Fenrisian Grey and add more colour. Mm -hmm. 
using Screaming Skull to add a little more sun reflection to the edges. I felt that the blade was a bit too plain in this area, so I'm going to add another light reflection, building it up with white scar to start. Going back to Frenrisian Grey to blend the white scar into the blade. Adding another light reflection. I felt the tip was too saturated with color and the white reflection will desaturate the area to give a more metallic feel. Once again, I'm just using thinned white scar. Again, seeing how it looks from the angle it would normally be viewed at. I'm happy with that. Now for the final step. I'll add some Mortarian Grime to some of the lighter areas to darken and add some green tones. Mortarian Grime is quite light for a wash, so I'm just using it straight. I'm going to be adding a few layers, mainly to the bottom side of the blade, which would be its left. Once it's dried, I'll check again at the proper angle to see how it looks. Adding a second coat to the areas that still aren't dark enough. Here's how it looks once I've added the red points and a little reflection. I'll show how I did that on the underside of the blade. First, base coat the area with Screamer Pink, then apply Evil Sun's Scarlet to the beads and area around them. The Evil Sun's has been thinned with a little Lamian Medium. Second pass of Evil Sun's to give it a solid coat. Thin Wild Rider Red and apply it just to the end of the beads. Then paint a thin line straight out of the beads. This will be the red light reflection. With Fire Dragon Bright, just add a tiny dot on the bead and at the base of the line added earlier. And it's done! Next up is the armor. I'll just be focusing on the leg since it incorporates all the techniques I'll be using on the rest of the armor. It's a big model, so I'll start off with a size 9 brush. Starting off with Caliban Green and going to pick out all the edges and details. I'll be making the edges fairly thick for this step, so it will still be seen when I add the other thinner layers over top.
For larger, flatter areas, use the side of the brush to get a smooth transition, building up the layer in a larger area instead of using the tip. Now I'll be using some Lamy Medium to thin the wah flesh for the next step, which is picking out the details and edge highlighting. Just make sure to do thinner edge lining so the Caliban is still visible. Added a bit of water to thin the paint and added a few more layers to some areas that could just use a bit more lightening. Using some thinned Caliban Green to get a smoother blend on the last layer, just in larger areas. Applying a very thin coat to some of the areas where I had just applied the wah flesh. It's important to not over apply, just a small area on the border between the Caliban and the wah. For the next highlights, I'll be using a finer tipped brush, size 2. It's still synthetic though. Going to add some Lamy Medium to Strachan Green. For this part, I'm not going to highlight all the edges, just the ones facing up. Starting out with flat surfaces that would catch the light the most, like this knee pad. Picking out the corners too, anything that would easily catch the light. Since most of the light on the back of the leg is blocked by the coat, I'll focus on highlighting the areas that are facing forward.
Just like with the last color, I'll quickly go back to the last paint, in this case Wall Flush. I'll use thin layers to get a smoother blend on the flat areas, like the ankle area and the tip of the boot. Also, I can use this step to adjust and lighten areas if I feel they are too dark after the latest highlights, like in the knee area. Going back with Caliban and blending those areas I just touched up with Wa Flash. For the final highlight, I'll use Nurgling Green, thinned with a little Lamian Medium. For this step, I'm just focusing on the corners and flatter areas that would really catch the light. Best not overdo this stage, less is more. As you can see, I'll go back to areas I've already highlighted and give them a second layer, just so they have a solid coat. Now I'm going to apply Nuln Oil to some of the recesses that I want to deepen. And that's how I do the dark green armor. Next up is the belt. Going to mix Screamer Pink and Gorthor Brown, about a 50-50 ratio. After it's been based, I'll wash it with Reikland Flush. Once that's dry, I'll go back with Gorthar Brown and do a layer of highlights. After that's done, I'll mix a little Flayed One Flush into the Gorther Brown and do another layer of highlights, focusing on areas that would catch the light most, like the tops of the skulls and sharp edges. For the final step, add a bit more Flayed One Flush into the mix and gently highlight. I'm going to add some stippling onto the more plain areas to add a bit of texture. And that's the belt. Next is the leather holster for the pistol. I'm going to start with the fang and pick out all the edges. Now I'm going to water down the paint a bit and apply it quite liberally to a lot of the larger areas to add a touch of blue. With Fenrisian Grey, I'm going to add some Lamium Medium to thin it and highlight the edges, being careful not to over-highlight. Here, I'm going to load up my brush with more paint than usual. My brush strokes end at the area where I want the paint to be applied the most. 
Most of the paint will be applied to where the brush was last because of how thin and loaded the brush is. Remove a lot of paint onto my glove so I don't have to worry about over applying on the smaller details here. With the larger areas, I'm going to add some stippling for a bit of texture, like the belt. As always, going to apply a second coat as needed to the areas, usually the corners so they stand out more. Now I'm going to remove most of the paint off my brush with my glove using the side of my brush to apply a very thin but large stroke to any area I feel could be a little lighter than it currently is. Going to mix a little bit of Flayed One Flush in the Fenrisian Grey and pick out some of the edges. Now I'll go back with the fang and blend some of the highlights and darken any areas that need it. I'll base coat the pistol with lead belcher, then highlight with rune fang steel. After the highlight, apply a layer of gnome oil. I'm going to use this opportunity to apply some Nuln oil to areas on the holster as well, just to fix any over highlighting in the crevices. And that's the black leather holster done. Now onto the shield. Going to start with a base coat of Screamer Pink with a second coat of paint on the ridge of the shield. I use the same steps for the red part of the shield and other red details on this model, so I'll just go over them for the shield. After that, I'm going to apply Nuln Oil around the details and edges. Once that is dried, I'll thin the Evil Sun Scarlet with Lamy and Medium. Here, I will pick out the details and highlight the ridge in the middle of the shield. Building up the red with multiple layers, it's important to wait for the paint to be nice and dry before going for another coat. That's why I'm bouncing all over the place here. When that's finished, I'll mix a little Flayed One Flesh into the Evil Sun Scarlet for the next highlight. Picking out all the details with this step. For the next step, I'll mix a bit more Flayed One Flush in and do a few highlights, mainly in the extreme edges which would really catch the light.
going back with a thin layer of Screaming Pink to blend the Evil Sun Scarlet a bit more. I felt like the corner needed something, so I'll add some Evil Sun Scarlet mixed in with some Flayed One Flush for a little highlight here. Adding more Flayed One Flush with each step. And that's the red done. On to the bronze parts. Base coat the areas with Hash Up Copper. Once that's done, wash the areas with Gilliman Flush Contrast. When that dries, base coat with Lead Belcher. Next, I'll highlight with Runefang Steel, focusing on the edges and corners. Once the highlights are done, I'll apply Mortarian Grime to some areas. It's a fairly light wash, so I'll need a second coat in some areas. Once that's dry, I'll apply the Nuln Oil mainly to the undersides of the steel areas. That's the base of the metals done. I'll finish them once the whole model is sealed with varnish. Next up is the gems. Starting with a base coat of McCrag Blue. Now I'll highlight the gems with Sotec Green, building it up in a U shape along the bottom using a few layers. Once that's done, I'll highlight with Beharoth Blue in the same U shape as before. When the first highlight is done, I'll thin the Beharoth Blue and start to lighten the bottom half of the gem. Using white scar, I'll apply tiny dots along the top. Mix a little white scar into Beharoth Blue and highlight the bottoms of the gems. Now I'm going to do a light glaze of Sotec Green and Beharoth Blue over the dark parts of the gem to add a bit of saturation to those areas, which were a little too chalky for my taste. And that's how I did the gems. Next up are the purity seals. Starting with a foundation of Screamer Pink on the wax areas. 
and a base coat of Gorthar Brown on the paper areas. Mix a little flayed one flush into the screamer pink and highlight the wax. For the next highlight, mix in a bit more flayed one flesh. Make sure to pick out all the edges. Once again, mix in a bit more flayed one flesh and highlight. Here, I'm using the side of the brush to apply the paint in a thinner coat to help give it a glossy wax appearance. And that's the wax done. Next are the paper parts of the purity seal. Using Gorther mixed with flayed one flesh, about a 50-50 ratio, and a bit of lemmy and medium to thin it. Starting with highlighting the edges, then also adding some striation strips down the center to give it an old weathered parchment feel. Once that is done, I'll use straight flayed one flush and do the same steps, only this time focusing on the areas that would catch the light instead of the whole paper. Here, I'm using the side of my brush to apply a glaze to some areas to gently lighten them as needed. And that's the paper done. On to the scribbles. I'll be using Abaddon Black thinned with Lamian Medium for the text. And using my highest quality size zero brush instead of my usual synthetic brushes. Going to start off with a fancy looking L for Lion, then add in the scribbles below. Adding in a little dot to break up the scribbles. For the bottom of the purity seal, I'll do a little winged sword. I'm going to make a few mistakes with this step because it's so small, but I can touch them up later on.
Once all the scribbles are done, I'll thin out some flayed one flesh and glaze the paper. This will wash out the text a bit in areas where it would catch the light. Make sure not to overdo this part, you don't want to ruin the scribbles. And that's the purity seals finished. Now that the shield is complete and the rest of the model is assembled and sealed with a matte coat, I'll do highlighting on the metals. Start with mixing hashed up copper and runefang steel about 50-50. Next, I'll highlight the edges and raised areas on the copper areas. With this step, it's best not to over highlight. You want to keep some of the metal areas matte and not shiny. After that highlight, mix a bit more rune fang steel into the mix and highlight again. Next, I'll use straight rune fang steel to gently highlight the edges of the copper. Once those highlights are done, I'll go back to just hash your copper and add a few more shiny areas now that I know how the highlights look. After that, I will use Reikland Flush to help transition the metallic parts with the matte areas, generally using this only in flat larger areas where the transitions are more obvious. Next are the steel highlights. Using straight rune fang steel for these areas, just going to pick out the edges. And that's the shield complete. Thanks for watching part one of the lion. Hope you enjoyed it. Part two coming soon. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. 